Of late, there has been a lot of hype around increasing the context length of the LLMs. For example, there was a paper titled Leave No Context Behind from Google, and that was in early April. They proposed the infinite attention. Following that, we also have another work now, which is the paper from Microsoft. So this work from Microsoft is titled Make Your LLM Fully Utilize the Context and it's been published in late April 2024. So what they're saying is that the LLMs have a problem called Lost in the Middle Challenge, which is that, you know, it struggles to fully utilize the information within the long context. In order to overcome this problem, they are proposing information intensive training, which is a data driven solution. So the solution to this context could be either data driven or it can be model driven where you actually change the model. But this paper is all about uh, a data driven solution. So if we look at the related work in long context LLMs, there are primarily two directions in the development of long context LLMs. So one is the data engineering where the emphasis is to construct long context data for training the LLMs. And the other one is effective and efficient training, which investigates methods to optimize the training of long context models. So this proposed approach is more in the data engineering side where they come up with a novel data collection technique. So let's look at how information intensive training works. So they introduce the construction of data set for IN2 training. So IN2 training aims to explicitly teach the model any position in a long context can contain crucial information. So the hypothesis is that if we have a long context, then there must be places within this context where the information is quite crucial. And the idea of information intensive training is to exactly enable the model to spot these locations where information is crucial. So for this, what they're doing is they're constructing a long context question answering data set. And how do they go about constructing this data set? So they've introduced two approaches. One is the awareness of fine grained information. And the other one is the integration and reasoning of information. So let's look at both of those. So let's look at the first one, which is fine grained information awareness. So in this case, we first take a raw data set and split it into 128 tokens. And we call each of this set of 128 tokens as segments. And we then present these segments to a powerful GPT model, a GPT-4 model. It can be any other LLM that's quite powerful, it's equivalent to that of GPT-4. So once we present these segments to the LLM model, we provide the prompt in such a way that the instruction IF gets an answer AI to the question QI that's been presented to the model. So we then combine the segment along with similar segments that are created from the same raw data set and we create the long context. And while we are training the model for IN2 training, we provide this long context along with the questions and prompt the model to get the answers back. This way, the model learns to retrieve the contextual information in the long context. So there can be situations where the context is located in more than one of these segments because the length of the segment is just 128 tokens. And if the contextual information is much longer than 128 tokens, so how do we go about it? To tackle this problem, the paper proposes integration and reasoning of information. So what we do in this case is we consider a set of segments instead of just a single one. In this example, it's depicted with three segments. And this creates a multi-hop question answering scenario where the LLM has to do at least two passes of question answering. And we modify the instruction prompt in such a way that the LLM answers accordingly. And what we do is concatenate the set of segments along with some of the randomly sampled segments from the data set CI and we create this long context. So mathematically for the fine grained information awareness, they've just given this equation where we have the single segment SI and there's a bunch of other segments, uh, which is a set. We shuffle and concatenate them to form the long context. Similarly, in the other one, we do the same, but we have a set of segments instead of just SI. 
and we also shuffle the combination of all of these and then concatenate them to form the long context li one of the problems that could arise because of creating this synthetic data using this context length is that there can be a length bias during the IN2 training. So to overcome this, they ensure that the length of the long context LI is evenly distributed from 4K to 32K tokens, such that the length balance strategy can be implemented to reject sampling on RI, the set of uh, RJ samples that we create. So for IN2 training, they choose the Mistral 7B Instruct V0.2 model and they fine tune it and call the new model as fill in the middle, short form being a film 7B. And they perform IN2 training in the instruction tuning paradigm, meaning that they do a supervised training and they provide the long context and the questions as the input to the LLM and the answer is shown at the output for supervision and the minimize the loss between the output that's been generated and the answer. The second contribution of the paper is in terms of evaluation and they introduce a new concept called various long context probing. So what is the usual uh, standard go-to approach for long context probing? And that is the use of needle in the haystack. So needle in the haystack is a repository for pressure testing LLMs. So it's a simple needle in the haystack analysis, as the name says, is to test in context retrieval ability of long context LLMs. So if you have an LLM which can do a long context, then this gives an approach to test how good those long context LLMs are. And the test consists of three steps. First step is to place a random fact or statement in the middle of a long context window. So the statement becomes a needle and the long context become the haystack. Ask the model to retrieve the statement is the second step. And the third step is to iterate over various document lengths and context lengths to measure the performance of the model. So this is the typical three-step process that's followed by this repository needle in a haystack in order to test the long context LLMs. So one of the biggest problems with this needle in the haystack in the recent days is that the models are getting so good that the performance on this needle in the haystack is getting to a near perfect performance. For example, if we look at the figure that they have given, we could see that you know, on a scale of 0 to 10, the performance of the proposed film 7B model is green throughout. So that is not a good metric to evaluate a model. So as a workaround or as a solution, this paper proposes what is called the uh, VAL probing. When it comes to VAL probing, we are considering three context styles. We consider document style, we consider code, and we also consider structured data context like SQL database table. And we also consider three retrieval patterns forward, backward, and bidirectional retrieval. They've given this figure as to show examples of VAL probing. For example, in case of document sentence retrieval, we have an example of the retrieval keywords which are achieving new state-of-the-art performance on all four. And where does it occur? It occurs in the middle of a sentence. And so this becomes a bidirectional case. And there's also the other type of data which they have considered as uh, code. And in this case, they're given an example of backward retrieval case where the retrieval keyword happens to have a context that's before or backward to that of the uh, retrieval keyword. And the third type is the structured data, which is a SQL query table. And they've given an example of a forward retrieval. For example, this code, it occurs here, but then the entire context occurs after that has occurred. So with that information on VAL probing, let's look at how they evaluate the performance of Film 7B. One of the problems with long context models is something called the loss in the middle problem. So if we take a long context of say 800 sentences, then we can see that other models like a Mistral 7B Instruct version 2 have a dip in the middle. So this is a typical lost in the middle problem, but the proposed model seems to overcome that, which we can see in this orange line. Similarly, we can see the same uh, applies for the code function retrieval and also database entry retrieval. A couple of other state-of-the-art models are long aligned and 
intern lm2 even those two models we can see that they are suffering from the lost in the middle problem but when it comes to the proposed film 7b it doesn't suffer from the lost in the middle problem as we can see from this orange line here in all these plots so on top of studying the lost in the middle problem they go all the way to do quantitative analysis so they come up with these figures for the average score which is the average performance across the entire context reflecting the overall long context utilization and the second one is the gap score which is the min max gap and we calculated by the difference between the maximum and the minimum performance and as we can see that they have even compared it with GPT-4 Turbo which is quite state of the art they have compared it with Mistral 7B, Long Align, Intern LM2 and GPT-4 Turbo and we can see that clearly film 7b seems to outperform all of these models so the pipeline proposed in this paper is more of a synthetic pipeline because we come up with a synthesized data set so the question now is how well does it perform against a real world data set so in order to show that the proposed model actually performs as good as any other models that's trained on real world data they come up with this results and they compare it with GPT-4 Turbo and some of the other state-of-the-art models like Mistral 7B and Intern LM2, etc. And they compare on all of these real-world scenarios and use this data set such as narrative question answering, hot pot QA, you know, Casper. And we can see that Film 7B performs quite on par and it's quite competitive and in fact on some of the data sets it actually outperforms the state-of-the-art models. So the last question one, one can arise when using this model is that so we have trained with all the long context data so does the model actually perform on short context tasks? They have experimented with short context tasks such as MMLU and race hedge and all that and show that the performance is on par with Mistral 7B Instruct V2, indicating that the model is not only fit for long context problems, but also for short context problems. So with that, I think we are pretty much wrapping up this paper. Just to summarize, the paper proposes two solutions for long context. One is the information intensive training, which is a data-driven training approach. And it has two types, which is fine-grained information awareness and the integration and reasoning. We saw that these two pipelines for generating synthetic data when it comes to the IN2 training. And then we saw also about long context probing and they have proposed a new type of probing called various long context probing. And the main contribution there is to utilize three retrieval uh, types, namely bidirectional, backward and forward. And they've also proposed the probe for three data types. One is the standard textual data, and the other one is the code data, and the third one is the structured data, such as a database entries. So that pretty much wraps up our review of this paper titled Make Your LLM Fully Utilize the Context. So with that, I'm wrapping up, and I will see you in my next video. Until then, take care.